I always uh, try to put things in comparison. Like, if you really have the eye, and a lot of us when we are kind of growing up, especially more so now, you know, when people have access to phones where everybody is taking a picture with their phones, and you know, you can click, you can shoot a video on a phone, and for all you know, there is so many apps like Video Leap and stuff like that, where you are you can become a cinematographer just by using your phone. So. i always try to use this comparison to try and make understand what it is that makes you a cinematographer if you are clicking pictures and you are able to get that moment then you are a beautiful still photographer if you are able to click a small series of pictures where the emotion comes through you become a cinematographer but the point being that you have to capture a small emotion a thread of a story uh anything that can invoke a thought process or you are catering to somebody's thought process is what makes you a cinematographer i mean that would be the simplest way of trying to you know say what a cinematographer actually does because you can read all about it i mean in in film school you are going to teach them the fine nuances of it you know where you are going to explain that what i have said in a few words is actually so much more to it but i'm i my understanding is that people who are here are not here to understand too much of technical jargon that's what you are there for but to make it understand in very few simple words this is what a cinematographer is you find a story you find an emotion you find somebody's thought and you put it into a series of pictures namely video see what is cinematography at the end of the day what is video at the end of the day you click one image that's one frame 24 frames per second is a video in charlie chaplin it was 16 frames a second and then today we are 24 frames per second you know so that is what we eventually that is what a cinematographer will do absolutely see i mean our target audience let me put an again a simple example our target audience you like let let me say i like wearing baggy jeans and an oversized shirt this is what i like i go to my tailor and i say i want a, you to stitch a shirt and a pant for me now just by saying a shirt and a pant it can be generic you know unless i explain to him because i like a baggy pant if i like a uh, 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 oversized shirt now that is giving him some thought now what he does to it now he becomes a cinematographer and me saying that i want the de- baggy pant and an oversized shirt i become the director so that is what it is and it is his understanding of what is baggy what it is his understanding of what is an oversized shirt and how he executes it is what it is so you understanding and a grasp of the 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 thought process everything starts with the thought process i have not been fortunate enough to be in the era of uh, um mr wilson akb you know they were the stalwarts of hindi black and white cinema now when they were stalwarts this one thing that is common to all of them they became amazing cinematographers after the age of 40 45 and do you know why the reason is it took them 20 years as an assistant as an apprentice to learn what it is to understand what beer sahab is doing to even understand what an exposure is to understand what is the role of this lens he didn't know any of this because he just landed up on a film set that's how it was like many years ago there were no film schools to teach you what you are learning today and to learn and to be in that environment and to understand see when i am on working mode now nobody has the time to say ha baba come here this is the lens this is what a white lens does because we are catering to a producer who's saying 8 hours you have to finish it so nobody is going to teach you so it takes you that much more time to really understand what is happening on set and before you learn it today the average age of a cinematographer has probably come down to 24 you know you'll pass out in 21 you'll do maybe 1 2 years of being an assistant just to get the hang of it but 23 24 you are a cinematographer without cinematography institute you can go back to the age of dinosaurs and come and become a cameraman at 45 so i think film schools are very important in making understand the very basics so when you go on set if somebody comes on my set a film student comes on my set and i say okay get me the 50 lens 
He's not going to ask me, sir, 50 se kya hoga? 24 kyun nahi laga rahe ho? This is the thing. Cinematography is probably one of the youngest art forms. Today, people would kind of uh, agree to call it an art form because, you know, I always considered myself, say, I'll tell you, my sister is amazingly good at painting with the uh, colors, okay? And between my sister and me, I can't even draw a straight line. But what I'm good at is I'm good at visualizing where a light should be. So what somebody once rightly called it, it's painting with light. So in its own way, it's come into an art form today. Cinematography is an art form today. But art form which was not recognized and hence there is such a late growth of film schools everywhere. It's only I think in the last two decades that the film schools have started coming into force on their own. You know, otherwise there was only the one FTII which was done by government so many years ago. And the, the, before that, music schools, art schools, Trinity College, Berkeley Music, they've been around for so many years. It's the same thing. For me, it's the same thing. You want to learn a guitar, you never ask why am I going to school or why is a teacher teaching me guitar? You never ask that. It's understood. It's been accepted today. And the same flow, I would say it's a point of time where People understand what a film school is for. That, that's, that's, that's as how simple as I would put it. The, the ability to... See, for example, the very example that I gave you, a baggy pant or a straight line or any of these things. Uh, these are something that I've understood the, the, the question where it's coming from. And I put a visual to it. That is cinematography. To understand what your director is trying to say and how best you execute it. So to the, the power of grasping and being able to quickly come up with a solution on a real film set. At the same time, satisfying your craft. You know, you want to put a red light today, you better make sure you put a red light today. But it should suit the director, it should suit the story. So it is all of those things that go, there are so many things. It's like the art of fine cooking for all I know, you know. You got to have all the ingredients, you got to get everything together. And then, I mean, I can give can, uh, uh, onions, tomato, yeah. potato to everybody. But the amount of onion and potato and tomato you use, a very experienced master chef might use two of each pieces, three from that and four from this. And an unexperienced cook might put all together. And I hope that this is the best. That is experience. I think I, I may not be the right person to know the vast scope of it because I'm very much like a horse on blinders. But from my understanding, I am quite aware that, you know, there are a few people who tried pursuing this, for example, in NASA. Because NASA is all about imaging. The cameras that I I have a I have a preferential uh, use for red cameras to be honest, and uh, all the spacecraft and your telescope, all those images they are hooked up with the red, you know. So there is so much more that can be done. It's just a, about opening up your uh, barriers and probably researching more and just trying to find out how. See, imaging has become an integral part today. Creative imaging is where we come in. Otherwise, you might just do a CCTV camera, you know. But creative imaging is where we come in. And there is so much scope of that which is growing day by day, to be honest. Like, I just know one example because one of my friends told me that he's trying to get into, trying to understand about the NASA imaging and all that. And I was like, oh. But primarily, even today, I think cinematography, where as far as we are concerned, is a lot to do with advertising and films to, at this moment, to be honest. But with that example that I gave, I'm sure there are many more avenues that could be there, but it has to be explored. Cinematography is not rocket science. I always call cinematography, to be, to be putting very bluntly, I call cinematography as uh, common sense. For example, like I'm trying to see in my own experience, what have I done? I would say I was shooting in Goa. I had Mr. Salman Khan and... Uh, you know, they will not be able to give you one more take and they won't give you too much time. And uh, it was 4.30 and the sun was coming down and the director asked for another shot. And all of a sudden, I could not clear the space. You know, I couldn't clear everybody because he asked, Aray, let's take one more wide shot. And there was no time 
because some schema was standing here, some vehicle was standing there, some generator is standing there. There's no place for me to take a wide shot suddenly. And I'm like, okay, how do I say yes to him right away? And we know we are losing time. And at that point of time, I know I'm losing light. The sun is so low and it's coming down in the frame. I'm thinking, how do I solve this? The sun is about to go. Now, this is what I did at that point of time. Both, it was a creative call also. And it was the fastest thing in the world. Instead of worrying that the sun is going, I just placed my camera in such a way that the sun is least in frame. And I made a silhouette shot out of the two of them. It was a wide silhouette shot. So instead of trying to understand how to light up in the last minute with the sun almost going, I just put the camera as a silhouette shot. That is called common sense. That's all. You just have to reach a... Instead of fighting the problem, I made the problem only my solution. Sun is going, no? Light is low. So why fight with the light only? I put that sun only in my frame. So it became a solution to it. So that is what I've been trying to say. It's like, just common sense. I've survived this industry with that one simple line. Never ever fight a problem. Always make the problem a part of your solution. This has been my mantra since I started being a cameraman. Never fight a problem. Embrace the problem and make it a part of your solution. Perfect balance is actually the way to go. A perfect balance. Um, always remember that a filmmaking is not a single question. It's not a single person's... Filmmaking has never been a single person. When you join school, the first thing that school will teach you that filmmaking is the is a team, is a very teamwork. It's very, very teamwork oriented. And when you call it a team, automatically it's not just me alone. Now, as a cinematographer, you have a lot of responsibilities. You know, an actor is coming. They are dependent on your time. The producer is spending money. He is dependent on you finishing the day. And a director is dependent on you, hoping that you will give him the shot which makes his thought process explained and executed correctly. So it's it's all a team. It's all a team. I have to depend on my team to make sure that they are putting the light correctly. The camera is working without a problem. The costumer has understood my brief for the mood of the scene and brought the costumes accordingly. The art director has put the set. Like, you don't want to have a dinner scene and come to set and see that there's no dining table only. So see, so many things are there that you have to make sure that it all happens. So you can't be too technical about it. Because you're also thinking about the aesthetic sides of it. And at the same time, you can't be so aesthetic that you lose track of the technical side of it. So a good balance is always most important. A, a, a cameraman, a good cameraman is a very good person to have between the producer and a director also. Because the producer is spending money and the director wants his story. You are the guy on set, which is why they say that the cameraman is second most important person on set after director. He executes all of this in conjunction with an army of people. Whether it is a set, whether it is a costume, whether it is an AD, whether it is my assistant, whether it's the camera department, light department, grip department. Everybody looks to you to make sure that you are able to execute that day. And at the same time, beyond all this, I also have to satisfy my own creativity, my own art. That can't get lost just because I'm being a project manager. Then I'm just a project manager. So there is. So you have to make sure that, okay, how can I make this look nice? Okay, let me think of this. So now your art begins to start to play because you've said something to the art director. You've said something to the costume director. Your art is beginning to come through. Now your technical side comes when your team comes in. I want this camera, this lens. I want that 5K there. I want that 4K there. I want So now your technical side is coming through. And how you're able to do both of this together within the time that you have been given. Otherwise, films, they can keep making. There was only one Mughal Azam made for four years. Now, the average time is four months. So that is how you have to make sure. So, you know, understanding, having known whatever it is, 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 is a mix. It's a mix. In English, there's one simple word to, uh, to classify what you just asked. It's called mistake. We all make mistakes. And you've got to learn from your mistakes. 
the more you learn from your mistakes the better your experience is experience is nothing but a culmination of mistakes my understanding so today some people say i'm very fast some people say oh he's very very quick is because i made some mistake of course i have made these mistakes where my aesthetic has gone uh, has been compromised there has been mistake where i've uh, i've done the classic mistake where i'm thinking i'm rolling camera but i'm actually shutting camera the take is not there only so i mean we all make those mistakes but you got to learn from them so yeah i've made those mistakes i observe a lot i observe i mean right now if you were to ask me to observe i'm observing the way the light is falling on my face i observe the way the light is going across my face this part is dark this part has overexposed i keep observing my observation has never stopped that's one thing probably that keeps me constantly learning and i realized this long back that it was always beautiful and not only me i mean everybody knows that overcast days are very beautiful you know and i i try to see okay apart from the obvious that there is no sun how is it so beautiful and i realized it's just because of the clouds and the clouds are everywhere it's just all over the place and i realized one day over time it took me over time it took me where i decided that i'm going to create something what i call is my own cloud and i started doing that and i realized that it's beautiful actors love their faces and the other added advantage that came with it was my speed now if i were to use normal lighting we all once you start getting into film school you'll know that you know and because you are a third year student you'll know that you know you always light for one particular mark properly you know it leads up to that mark it will be like exposure will be 5 6 there but five steps back it let's put it before another five steps back it will be to it and two and it will go into darkness and then while acting you can't really restrict your actor because he may never stop in that mark mm-hmm. so you set an exposure for 5 6 but he's standing where the light is 4 and your director says boss i he acted very well i don't want to do one more but you will be like but technically it's not correct so i realized that i bypassed that problem when i figured out my own uh, wrap around my wrap around is within 4 5 to 5 6 everywhere for 10 steps and i realized actors love it they are not restricted at all so i decided that whenever i am in a very crunch time where up, okay in the next 2 hours we have to finish this i decided that i'll start improving on my wrap around light source i started improving 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 till i think at a point i reached where like in with my eyes shut i can do the wrap around uh, lighting and uh, actors liked it because they were going home in 3 hours on an ad shoot instead of spending 8 hours on an ad shoot so that is how i it it just came through so i just observed clouds and i decided one day that i'm going to recreate a cloud in my own uh, studio my team has been with me last 12 13 years my team has not changed so as i grew my team grew you know so they 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 so when 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 any day sir you know it more but for the benefit of people who are not yet uh, part of the process there is always a call time you know 9 o'clock work starts but before 9 o'clock people start coming to set that's called a, that's called the call time so my team always reaches and everybody's team on any shooting this is not anything that nobody knows but if anybody has not yet been on a set everybody reaches set at 8 o'clock you start work at 9 o'clock my team also reaches at 8 o'clock and they understood that okay let's make this cuz this is what he'll use so by 9 o'clock i was already ready the discipline is definitely observational quality you'll keep observing whether you watch movies whether you watch tv serial whether you watch life observation is a is should be never ending my opinion see at the end of the day once you leave film school film school will teach you how to be there how to take care what is an exposure what is everything film school will bring you till the doorstep yeah. but they say in english they say you can bring a horse to the well but you can't bring the well to the horse so that is the job of the film school is to bring the horse to the well you know after that every student will it's in your own interest that you learn from your film school that you observe from your film school you know and i mean i've 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 had experiences in the past where you know uh, students in the third year think that they are they are better than godar than trufo you know they'll always say what is this camera man ah, hut i don't like his lighting but you don't know the number of processes that have gone behind it so unless you observe it unless you've lived it 
you know yeah. i mean even till today if i see a movie i my discipline is such that i wait till the end credits if you are a film student you should probably sit till the last card comes which says thank you to dolby digital or dolby or this was shot on panavision you should sit through that because you are part of 200 people who stood on that set and made a film happen the day you do that you will understand how much hard work goes in there and it's just a simple mark of respect as opposed to saying ah what godard did in his time useless fellow no in his time he did what he did in our time maniratnam did what he did today raju hirani is doing what he is doing but you may not agree with them that is your subjectivity but to observe their work and be disciplined about it is the basics that will take you forward in life probably not today but probably at least 10 years back i could still remove a lens and put it back together as a cameraman in india you don't need to thread your own film like when we used to shoot on film at least like it's been uh, 2012 i think i shot the last time on a film camera but uh, before that as a cameraman you don't need to know how to open the 435 ka sprocket and put it in or add three as no sprocket and you have to put a sprocket you don't need to know all that because you have people who do that for you but it was my own understanding like you know let me try it. i want to i want to change the film in the changing bag i want to do it and see it you know i want to change the lens and see it so i it, it's that never ending quest that will that that for me started in my film school when i was in film school in 96 97 i remember i was sitting and reading something called the focal press there's a series of books by the focal press mm-hmm. they i don't know if they're still in uh, print or not but i used to sit and read them that was my way of absorbing what my th- that institute had whatever old books and i sat and read all of them didn't matter to me i think it's it laid the foundation of what i do today or whatever my thought process is it laid the foundation see i never i never i i never woke up from uh, college saying that i'm now a cinematographer no i didn't but it's what film school put into me for 3 years it's what film school taught you it's what film school tried to mold you your clay it's the best example i would put film school is where you go like wet clay then they try to make something out of you a direction professor will try to make a small clay mold you know how we make vases the directing professor will teach you how to be a director the cinematography professor will teach you how to be a cinematographer the editing professor will teach you how to be a c- editor and it's up to you whether you end up baking yourself and f- hardening that mold or you decide whether you want to go some other way that you can't do Mr Raman can make the vase beautifully and hand it out at the end of the third year now whether you went into the oven is not in Mr Raman's hand so it's how you use the institute in those 3 years 2 years 1 year how many ever years you're there is what is the best way i would say that a film school is there for see if you have come into film school i would say you better have understood that in life you have a passion for cinematography you have a passion for the whatever line that you want to take because if and this holds true for every 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 aspect whether you're a banker whether you're a teacher whether you're a doctor the passion is what is the first driving force if you have the passion you in film school should then look towards the honesty towards that passion you should be honest towards that passion we are not here like any other college where you are here to have the best 3 years of your life for that you have bsc ba you do all of those things you have those college that is your rebellion time after your plus 2 is what i feel you know you were so far you had to follow a strict time table and all that and i'm being honest by saying that that is what you do when you go to your bsc bachelors after that if you have a genuine passion is when you start joining a film school and when you come into film school and you start getting access to the wonderful knowledge the depth that your professors have 
the 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 kind of uh, exposure to the cameras and stuff that you are getting which a normal person and a layman from where will they get uh, access to these kind of cameras and stuff you want it's only a film school that is giving it to you that here yeah, play with it for the next 3 years where else will you get you make as many mistakes as you want in real world you make a mistake you're out of job that is where your film school you that's why you're coming to film school that's why to answer sunanya's question in earlier days it took they were 45 years before they managed to sit on the camera because you can't make a mistake you make a mistake you're out of job so you keep learning you keep learning you keep learning you're not making that mistake but in film school you got a camera you have it in second year you make a mistake third year you make a mistake nobody's going to kill you for it you learn from it you use your uh you use you use your honesty towards your craft and you inspire yourself you start you start uh making a observations again i would use that word observation of what you are doing and what it is resulting and then you see whether you wanted this result in the first place or not yeah so if you got the result you learned something you didn't get the result you still learned something and in fact i feel if you didn't get the result you learned better because now you know what not to do and that is more important i wouldn't say that in school just because you didn't get the result you wanted to is not a reason for you to feel dejected i never felt dejected when i made a mistake but i felt oh okay this is not the way to do it fine i'll find another way yeah. yeah so that's what film school is there for so you have to bring ready if you've not found your calling make more mistakes no problem you'll find your calling that's the difference between trying to be successful and an actually successful person if you are successful you would have learned from your mistake and you have no qualms in accepting your mistakes even today if i make a mistake i'm the first one on set to say i'm sorry i made a mistake there's no easy way of saying this but i think that holds true for most professions that holds true for most profession i mean madam anuradha is not into cinema but i'm sure she has her own share of stress to run the institute deal with the finances mr raman sir has his own set so no stress no uh, mental uh, is is i think there in every line just that in cinematography if you are passionate you came to be a cameraman because you're passionate to be a cameraman and if that is your calling and if you're honest towards your craft you will already be ready to handle all these things if you're not ready to handle all these things you should have not come here in the first place i have no other easy way of putting it you know so if you were not cut out for being a cinematographer if you think oh i'll just shoot from 9 to 5 at 6 o'clock i'll have a beer you're not cut out for this line at all you have to be there on the ball because we are all answerable and we are all working as a team to finish something and you chose to be a cameraman because you honestly wanted to be a cameraman because you have the passion to be a cameraman and if you had the passion and honesty when you are on set you will understand the stress is not aimed at you so you can't take it personally nobody is aiming a stress at you you will if you are honest to your craft if you are honest to the film that you just started to work you will realize that this problem is way bigger than us and we are just a small cog wheel amongst many other machinery parts to try and make it happen so you will happily do it a good team member is somebody who and that's why i like i said before film making is a very team team process you better be part of the team because if you're not part of the team you are everybody is going to suffer so you will happily take the stress like when i have the stress like i said light is going khan sahab has to go i am not worried i'm not saying are what is this yeah no i said okay let's do something about it that is the attitude to have always trying to be a part of the team is the right attitude then it is not stress you understand that there are certain factors beyond my hands and you will try to do the best to make it happen and when you do that if you fail that day nobody is going to say are yaar he what is this yaar he was slow no they will see we are humans we have a higher intellect capacity people will see that you try to do for the betterment of the film at that time i didn't worry much about my lighting like you said there are days you let go of your aesthetics yes i let go of my aesthetics why because i want to finish the day the producer understands it the director understands it even the actor understands it and they appreciate it 
and some other day there might be a feedback there might be something that happens they'll just come back they'll just give it like you never know what it is but they understand it nobody is not blind and especially when you're a cinematographer on set all eyes are always on you so people do see the effort that you're taking so it, it's it's all part of the process there are days when the stress will be too high there are days when physically you'll be exhausted but if you are exhausted remember there are 200 other people who are lifting those heavy lights they are also exhausted you 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 can't have so much ego that you're not looking at others when i work i have a team like i said that's been with me for 12 years the team wouldn't stay with me if i'm such a hard taskmaster the fact that my team has stayed with me is a thing that you are a team player so then everything falls into place and everything else follows there everything else follows i'm exactly. telling you when i was not a dop i used to ask some of my friends at that time would become a dop here how to become a dop here how did you become a dop and they said it's a process it will just happen one fine day it will just happen and i said any line you're saying was just because you became a dop one day it will happen means what how, how do i take that as a inspiration but that is true one fine day somebody will notice you and somebody will say listen hey boss listen i know you are a good assistant do you want to shoot something it will happen he noticed i was a good assistant because i never slacked my passion was always there somebody will notice you and it will come mr ravi k chandran was my guru and i joined him in 98 when i was still in chennai and we done these uh, tamil films called kandukonde and kandukonde uh, kannathir muthamitta citizen uh, probably i'm losing some names here but i i joined in it and i just had a advantage that i could speak hindi and uh, ravi kishan was getting very famous to start shooting a lot of hindi films so he said boss you know hindi you go and sit in bombay whenever i come to bombay you he start shooting there i said okay so he got me to bombay and i was here and i used to coordinate for him you know while he was still shooting something here and let's say tomorrow he is coming here so my job was to coordinate with the production like get like the team work is always there whether you are an assistant or whether you are a thing you are just doing it on behalf of the dop so for me that became a very advantageous process where i was doing all the all the coordination and learning on the job that's what happened for me so i started doing slowly slowly i had to coordinate with the light boy then i started coordinating with the assistant director then i started coordinating with the art director and over time you started understanding the process more more and more and it soon reached a stage where the cameraman was so comfortable with my aesthetics also see this is just like the part of coordination is probably more clerical if i may call it but the aesthetic side was that he is coming tomorrow morning 9 o'clock 7 o'clock like i said you reach earlier than others right so when i was an assistant i used to reach at 7 o'clock along with the lights and i used to do some basic lighting setup like what my team could it does for me i used to do for him and over time it reached such a stage that he would just come and he'd sit directly on the camera and not a single light was changed it would be exactly the lighting that i had done like even today there are many songs in hindi films that has been untouched by ravi sir ravi sir so that is when you realize ki okay now you're learning in your path in your process is going in the right way you know and that's how you realize that you're learning correctly so after a point of time you start to say okay i can probably become a cameraman next so the journey is always that of self learning self introspection observation never changes etc 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 i think this was post black and uh, around about that time ravi sir was a very good uh, dop he used to take very good care of us and i one fine day realized that he is taking such good care of me that i don't need to go out and work anymore he is paying me well enough i have a nice house in bombay i am paying my rent why do i need to go out when at that realization hit me i went up to him and i said sir for next 6 months i'm not coming to you he said what happened i gone mad over i said no i just really want to try it before the fire in my belly dies like i can do this in my sleep for you but let me try it it's time that i try it for myself and for 5 6 months i got no job okay let me tell you that it's not easy i got no job at that time to matlab it was very very difficult but it just so happened that in television there was somebody one guy 
who was looking to shoot in those days there used to be a lot of these promo shoots okay these television promos used to happen a lot and he was a guy who probably seen me shoot and maybe it was just luck it was just timing he called everybody nobody was probably free and he said okay let's just try somebody new some cameraman's assistant let's try any thought of me like i said he said are he was a very good worker on set he was sincere let's see maybe he'll shoot it and he called me and he said listen i have a very small tv promo we can't afford somebody like ravi ke chandran but would you think that you can shoot it for us and i jumped at that opportunity i said yes of course i can do that i'm waiting to do something on my own and that's how i went and he said listen it's not even on film see in those days it was a big deal not shooting on film like if you are big you shoot on film if you are not big you shoot on video okay so that has gone out of the window but he said i'm just shooting on uh, digi beta i said are digi beta is like huge that's no problem is at least i was I, when he said i'm not shooting on film i was expecting to hear low band high band now these are things that later kids will learn in film school i was expecting to hear low band and i was even okay to i was going to argue ki let me shoot high band but when he said digi beta i thought boss i have reached oscars so i said of course i'll shoot uh, digi beta and i went ahead and i shot it and it so happened that it was at that time there was a tv serial called jassi jassi koi nahi and apparently it was a very huge uh, tv serial and i got the song where from her ugly avatar she was being made into the beautiful avatar and i got that song and for the first time there was a song in a tv serial and it's always measured by trps and that song trps went through the roof that people in sony tv asked who shot this it doesn't look like our tv serial it looks way better than our tv serial who shot this and i started to get more calls just to shoot tv promos and that's how my life started for next 2 years tv promos fed me and i did whatever experimentation i wanted on tv promos and learned more from that because yeah. so the tv promos shelf is shelf life is very small so i decided they will show it by monday when the tv episode airs the promo is dead so in one week whatever they have to pay at till air so for one week i'll learn anything i want there is no difference learning is learning learning is learning my tv promo was so that it would run only for one week so there would be days if i made a mistake it's that mistake is over on telecast for one week only films are there for eternity that mistake will stay uh, probably when i grow old at 80 if i see some mistake which i did in kick it will haunt me but the tv promo is gone it's over nobody remembers <laughs> so i don't remember what mistake i did when i was shooting i with mona singh or what mistake i did when you know with rajiv khandelwal i don't remember it but i learned from it for sure see when you are a assistant and this goes for any school student who's now passing out and you want to learn a bit more by joining somebody when you are an assistant the biggest difference between that dil chahta hai time and the time i shot dostana is responsibility when you are an assistant the responsibility is not on your shoulders it's on the shoulder of whoever the hod is so you will still have fun you will still have you know to learn on somebody so you are learning somebody is paying you to learn and make mistakes on set and if you make mistakes your hod is right there saying hey boss i don't want it uh, 5k there but my understanding was maybe that pike there will only give that nice kicker light that he's saying no 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 could bring it here that will come in frame because it's a 32 lens just keep it there you learn something by being on a set and being as an assistant but if i was a hod at that time if i was a dop and i made that mistake it's very costly because i i have to stop the shooting and say sorry 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 abhishek i need to remove that light no i'm 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 eating set time and the responsibility is mine but when you are an assistant you are having fun at learning and learning and more learning and not being really responsible about it you have to be responsible as an assistant to make sure that you are a good assistant but as a dop your responsibility is way more so that's the only difference that came in from the time i was a assistant to the time i became a dop i genuinely till today I think one of the biggest learning curves for me is a very very people found it very boring at its time you know and probably 
it, it is subjective, whatever it is. My biggest learning curve came on a film of Umrah Jan with Abhishek and Aishwarya. That was my biggest learning curve. It was almost like my first big push into the big world of glamour films and all that. And it just happened. It just happened. It happened by perseverance. That's it. It just happened. And everybody who knows the era of JP Datta and all, they know that he was a one-man army. Where he says is the camera, is the camera. Where he says is the light, is the light. Where he says what has to happen, that is where it will happen. And everybody said, how are you going to work with him? He's and I said, it's okay. I'm, I, I, my, my job is to easily understand a person and I'll, I'll, I'll understand what he wants. I think I'm very good at that. At understanding. See, one of the key things that I think the cinematographer needs to have is grasp of understanding. And I said, once I understand him, I think it won't be difficult. And it so happened that I understood him very well. And we did used to have slight differences of opinion. Like he would say, I've kept a candle down. Why is your light coming from the top? The light should be there. No, put your baby next to my candle. You need to source light it from there. And I was like, sir, this is Aishwarya Rai. If I put a light from below, it's not going to look nice. Please give me one take. You know, I need to show you the difference. You see the difference and you see. I can't put a light on Aishwarya from below. I can't make that no shadow travel up her eyes. I, I can't. I can't live with that. So he would laugh and he'll say, all you young boys, I don't know what is happening. Okay, put your light. So it was that process between me finding my lighting space. That's where I found my lighting space. Even uh, if you till today, I find my song Salam in Umrah Jan. It's, the song is called Salam. It was one of my biggest learning curves because I didn't care where the candle was and I lit it the way I wanted to light it in a real location with no place to light. But I learned so much about framing from JP Sub with his experience he used to keep a camera according to the need of the story. And I happily let him frame. I would say, yes, JP sir, you, you know your story best. There is a lot of Urdu in this. You place the camera wherever you want. I'll figure a way to light it. And that started a very beautiful journey in that film between the two of us. He would frame and I learned, oh, why is he putting... Like, it's so easy to all third year and second year students who know about telelensing. It's so easy to put a 100mm lens and outfocus anything in the background. It'll always look nice. You don't ever need to put a 24mm lens. You never ever need to put a 16mm lens and worry about depth of field and it's not looking nice and how to put a light. Just put 100mm on everything and get away with it. But we don't put 100mm on everything and get away with it. That I learned from JP Dhar. When that was the mixture of the two of us where I learned framing for a story and I continue to do that. When I place a camera, I first ask, sir, what is the need? What is the, what is the, what is the basic story? Why am I placing this shot? Oh, I want to establish him coming into the house. Oh, I want him to understand. He's crying thinking about his mother. Automatically, him coming into the house makes me, in my head, say 16mm. He's crying thinking of his mother makes me think of 100mm. I learned that thought process from him. So for me, that was like my biggest uh, thing. And if you manage to have somebody who's experienced on set, it's the best thing ever. The blocking and framing would be very, very closely related. Very, very closely related. Directors like to do a rehearsal and you are part of the rehearsal. They understand, okay, this actor, after this, I can't really make out that the expression is being lost. So let me just show where he's coming in. Okay, here I don't want the expression. I want everybody reacting. So when you are doing a rehearsal, you automatically start understanding in your single instinct that, okay, this is where everybody, let's say, for example, uh, simplest, commercial, English, uh, Hindi, English film, anything. Uh, good guy beats the bad guy, everybody reacts. Now, the good guy is beating the bad guy, I want to see him beat it. So automatically, the blocking will, in that point of time, the director will only say, I want a nice close. Everybody reacting, you will cut. In a Marvel uh, Spider-Man, it cuts to middle of uh, Central Square. Everybody stops, cars stop, everybody's looking. Now that's blocking, it's right there. The close-up of Spider-Man's uh, arm weaving the web is blocking. It's all part of it. So it, it, it is a process that comes automatically. Framing is knowing that you want that Spider-Man ka arm ka close. That in blocking, you already know. But do you want to frame it against the road or against the sky in a low angle or a high angle? That's framing. So that's the only simple 
way of understanding the difference between the two. Blocking, you have to be a part of the director's vision. Framing is your vision. See, if you guys have never worked together, and you are always tentative. I don't know what this director will do, or I, the director can think the same about me. I don't know what this cameraman will do. These things start playing. But once you got a kind of kind of uh, rapport, all these things go out of the window. You know, when you start thinking the same, like for example, I have certain advertising friends. In advertising, all these things are very important: storyboard and all these things. But when we both reach the set together, we don't even look at a storyboard. We just start going with the flow of the story. So it is. It is again with time that it comes. You know, I was uh, I was fortunate enough to speak with Mr. Robert Richardson when he had come to Hyderabad actually, and uh, he gave me a very interesting anecdote. So because like I was in awe of him. I follow his works a lot. Like you know, and uh, I asked him how was it to work with uh, Martin Scorsese, and uh, he said I'll give you an example. Martin Scorsese sent me a script. and i said wow first time i'm working with martin let me put my notes he read the script he said i feel this should be like this the colors should be like this i want to put a close up here i want to do all of this and he sent the script back he got a call from martin scorsese and martin said i got your script with notes when can we talk he said right away he reached martin's house and uh, then mr martin scorsese made robert richardson sit and he said i got your script but i just want to tell you i have not read any of your notes because i want everything done exactly the way i want to make it happen so please don't give me your notes and listen to me this story shocked me this is mr robert richardson after an oscar award being told by martin scorsese i have a vision i want to follow only my vision and there's nothing wrong with it because he still went ahead and shot a fabulous film he looks to me for framing because he just wants to direct the actors i don't want to know about this thing yeah i just want this I, hey i'm missing the blood let's go more close for the blood so that's so you will find people of all sorts is what i'm trying to say how you find your path it is not only here i for me it was a revelation because you're talking about robert richardson three time oscar winner with a martin scorsese or a quentin tarantino these are not small names and these i have heard first hand when i sat down and had a talk with him so it happens everywhere you have to find your space between framing blocking storyboard depending on the person who is sitting across the table some want it some don't want it you want it you don't want it it's going to be so subjective and you have to find your space from film to film it will be different as okay. much as all of us are different film to film this process will change i have a family of doctors they wanted me to be a doctor my mother was very sad i just told my mother see this is like i can become a doctor but then i'll be doing what you want and uh, i don't know what i'll become eventually because i don't i don't know what i was going to become whether i'll be a light boy also i don't know but at least let me try what i want you know i said i'm genuinely honestly my heart is not in being a doctor but my heart is probably in trying to figure why i'm clicking some images i just want to figure that out so i did have uh, thankful thankfully for my mother it all worked out see i also have a child now and uh, it is very correct that the parents are worrying it is it's in the dna to worry about your children that's the right thing so if students are frustrated because your parents are not agreeing don't blame them they are taking care or they are worried for you that is the first thing that you have to understand that your parents are worried for you for the lack of better knowledge now their parents are a generation even before me so the access to the kind of videos that you are watching that today's kids are watching the access to the kind of ott platforms like mr raman pointed out that they are watching is not what they had access to their understanding of our craft of our medium is not what our understanding is and even more so in your generation sunanya so if you are genuinely honestly passionate about wanting to be a cinematographer then i would tell the parents that they today know better than me 
you know i didn't know how to use an iphone for longest my daughter can unlock 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 whatever she wants she does it then she's like what 3 years old so if they are so good at what they know then you have to because eventually it's not their life it's what like i told my mother i'm i'm, I'm not going to become a doctor and i don't think i'll be happy at it so like my mother understood okay fine maybe he's got a point he it's his life and if he's and i was genuinely passionate about it i was genuinely honest about it i didn't want to come here because it's cool because you know film stars will walk on a red carpet i didn't do a, i didn't come here for those reasons if those are the reasons you're here then definitely you're going to go into the wrong career but if you're honest about your career if you're honest about your passion then you should be able to join a film school and make as many mistakes as you want and become what you want to become by the end of it generally speaking i love shooting in hyderabad this is my experience i've just done two films and i want to do more but i loved i loved i loved shooting in hyderabad uh for me probably understanding a bit of the language and i'm learning a bit more is an advantage but your basic craft doesn't change who you are your your need of the hour what is expected out of you does not change whether you're doing I, it just happened that i'm in i'm sitting in bombay like if i had not joined uh, ravi ke chandan who thought that my hindi speaking skills will be useful and he made sure that i sit in bombay i would probably still be doing tamil films eventually i would have become because i i grew up in chennai so i don't see any barriers between seeing it as a bollywood tollywood kollywood i don't think i would uh, i would i would differentiate to me filmmaking is filmmaking whether i would put it even like it doesn't matter if you're shooting a web series it does not change so there are many times when people have asked me are will you do this yeah will it's such a small work there is no small work there is no big work are you not spending 12 hours from the time you left your house to the time you came back you spent your 12 hours you've taken a same camera the 5k did not change the baby did not change the 2k did not change nothing changed you're using the same kino flow you're using the same camera you're using your same brain so there is no differentiation as far as i am concerned if you're seeing a differentiation then that is in your attitude and you need to kind of understand that work is work you know you need to be able to learn that you've following your craft that is the it's the same whether all across the board is the same this can be many 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 uh, ways of reaching it like if some directors they will be like see this is my story and they will always have see i think today when we speak of something there is always a precedent there is nothing that has not been done there is always a precedent that is there or there is always a thought that has come from somewhere now earlier in my understanding during 80s 90s cameramen used to reference paintings you know they used to reference uh, uh documentaries or whatever you call it you know then came the era where people would be like hey you know in 7 years of tibet you know how brad pitt is praying in that scene i have got i i got my inspiration from that scene so there are so many things that when you are talking along with your director in your initial stages and then the team comes in there is so much of back and forth and back and forth of discussions or things and when a team is like falls into sync now everything will start happening and sometimes some of my best uh, ideas would come from an art director it would be like you know why are you guys all thinking about a prayer room why don't i just put it on the side of the ghat and lot of Uh, light so the cameraman also can play with some diyas and he can be praying on the now you were so long thinking about a small dimly lit monastery interior from where he's got his original inspiration of praying to suddenly one guy saying he let's make this at the edge of the staircase where you know there is what do you call that in the in a temple that uh, water body that is there and the, so he suddenly from there he is given an idea to here and you think ah oh, why not it works the story doesn't change The, the the setting of the background temple wall makes it feel like he's still maybe in a meditative space 
the cameraman suddenly got some ideas of putting deers all over the steps the art director could say hey let me make some nice red cloth and put something in the depth it is a collaborative process and that's how a color palette will come on its own through the collaborative process i don't know i just think that i probably guess it was a chance encounter i would put it so i always say that my first ever 94 95 i think i witnessed a film shoot and uh, in that film shoot i was just i was just amazed and intrigued by what is happening you know like words came in on a piece of paper which we now fairly call it a script mm-hmm. and it came out as visuals and i was intrigued by this process i like how how is that happening and that intrigue is probably what made me come this side because i always knew i cannot sit for a 9 to 5 job in my head i knew i can't do that so i think that probably started the seed and that cultivated to me being like wherever i am today and that became a cameraman much later much later uh, a uh, cameraman comes in only when a script is kind of locked and probably the director has taken his actors now if you're friends and you're working from scripting stage is different but in a professional circuit like you would uh come in only probably once the project has finally been greenlit by a producer is going to go on the floors the actors have said yes and then comes in the cameraman thing is about scenes you always try to have some kind of cohesiveness you should be there should be a reason for your scenes to look little bit natural maybe you can tweak it according to your personal taste my personal taste is an actor should always look good that's my personal taste and i make sure that you know the actor looks nice etc etc and i make my exterior scene approach also kind of following that and yet it should not be jarring so that it takes away from the story whereas when you go to song and uh, act and a fight sequence there is no story line per se you know so there you freak out then then i go all guns blazing into what i feel is uh, very glamorous it doesn't need to have any continuity also today somebody pointed out that the parents are a bit worried i think earlier it was even more for the parents to be worried about their daughters but in today's thing i don't think that is a, much a case anymore you know everybody is now aware that the world is opening up and i would say that with internet and connectivity you know you are always in touch now with your kids wherever you are so probably now that's the reason why the relaxation for many parents and daughters in the so called earlier times have now come in so i don't see any gender guys i say uh, i know three four very 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 good female dop first and foremost be honest to yourself you know this is the first step towards a very 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 long path ahead the first three four steps are the most important ones like i said i made sure that my foundation was very good in film school i used my film school to make my foundation and that is what they should also be doing you know it's always fun to go out have fun go party i'm not saying don't do all of that but work hard party harder is not a bad thing to do but work hard you know don't make it the other way around is what i would say so be honest to why you were coming to film school why you decided to convince your parents that you want to be a filmmaker why you thought you could be a director why you think that you are a better cameraman if some of the aspirants or the film school students think that they are better than santosh shivan ravi chandran uh, pc sriram sure you can be there is no harm in thinking it but that thought should also be followed by actions you study hard you do work harder you be honest and passionate about it i would put it all broadly down to these two words just be honest to your craft just be passionate about it everything else will follow your inspiration will always be there once these two things fall in place everything will fall in place whether you are a film school student whether you are going to join a film school 
even if you become a cameraman these two things i feel are my only two words that i would put out